today we are going down to the Snaefell Mines. We've just come down from the mountain road there, parked up on a little side bit. We're now heading down the hill because it's the fastest way. We kind of have to head towards those trees over there where the boys are. That's where the mine workings are. You can probably make out the spoil heaps. Let's have a look. Oops, sorry, my finger. Yep, there's the big spoil heaps. And the mines start just about where those trees are. Andrew Scarf's done a, a book about all the history of the Snaefell mine. It's worth a read if you ever get a chance. And uh, I'll see you when we're down there and we can have a look around. All right, we are now closer down to the mine. There's the nice waterfalls just there. Hello. Hello. There's the old chimney, the old water feed, just there, comes down from the big river up there, it's all the way down. There would have been a water wheel around here somewhere. This looks like a, either a quarry, huh? Yeah, but this whole area looks like it's been dug out. Either a quarry to build the, uh, the buildings around here or something. Or it could have been the old mine entrance, I don't know. Go further down and have a look around. The remains of an old building and another big quarry kind of looking site or entrance to the mine. Not really sure. So much history around this place. It's crazy. It's really nice too. Look at that waterfall. There's another little one just curved up around the corner. Ah, some old ironwork. What is it? Yeah. Ooh. Just on the floor. And half of it looks like a railway track, doesn't it? And, uh, and the other half doesn't. It's a bit circular. Yeah. It's some kind of. Strange. No idea. Might even try and guess. Where's he gone? Boys have found a little hole poking into something, so they couldn't resist having a nosy. They're down there. Sorry about looking at Liam's boxes there. <laughs> Just underneath this building. A little tiny hole they found. Obviously as an explorer you can't resist the urge to see what everything is. The problem with being an explorer is you go, oh what's around there? And then you have to go and look. And then you see something else and you just keep going and going and going and going and a short walk ends up turning into like a four or five hour walk. It's all good fun, you get to see stuff. Not a lot of people get to see. Obviously this was the site of the, uh, the great uh, Snaefell mining disaster. You can read about that in Andrew Scarf's book. Bit of promotion again for you there Andrew. So we're down at the old chimney part and there looks like to be a red brick kind of slope it would have been coming down from the little hole up there that comes right the way down here and then off in the path direction the bits that you can see here are broken up and you can't really see much but as you get a bit further up you can see the brickworks here and where they would have been just there. See the little channel where the bricks were? And then as you get even further up, you can see the extent of the brickwork. And how smooth that would have been. Right up to the chimney.
this is the uh, memorial plaque up here. We're just down by the bottom of the river here. You can see what looks like a, a river passage. It goes under the mine site, like a little weir or something. Probably best to stay out of there. Probably not too stable these days. But yeah, it's still pretty interesting. So we're now on this flat working here. All the uh, MX riders and that's come and use this ground. There's an old building. Pretty much stood on top of the old mine buildings now. I think another company came over not uh, to go through all these uh, spoil heaps again. And see what they could take out of it. I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly now. Or do you think that's just because over time it's just built? So quite high up here. This is an old building and then they built on top of it. Up there is the old explosive hut, I think. I think. Looks like one because it's got two walls on the inside. Kind of goes round in a spiral. I'll show you later. And here we are down at one of the buildings. Another plaque. How are you? Yeah, that is quite new, isn't it? This is dedicated to our good friends and fellow off-road motorcyclists who enjoyed their time here at the lead mines and elsewhere on the Isle of Man. Let's have a look-see. Lots of people seem to sign the walls around here. Manx what? Manx A&E? Yeah. <laughs> 2022. <laughs> so there would have been machinery here with all these metal out bolts sticking out here. As to what machinery, I'm not sure. Pretty sure someone will be able to tell us. It's probably in Andrew's book somewhere. What do you reckon machinery would have been here, Jeff? Uh, Must have been a bloody big machine for the size of these <coughs> floor book markings. Nice little pool in there. Quite clear that water. It's coming from up there, up top where we just were, dripping down through, causing some mineral build up there on the metal. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Not 
storage. Is that over time still? metal work coming out the grounds even some electric cable there some more mine buildings down there soil heaps tons of soil around here all over in that direction just tons and tons and tons of soil They're really strange these gates, aren't they? Yeah. I reckon they are, I reckon they're all settling ponds. Settling ponds? What the hell's that? There's some shit. Down the river. You know, like, uh, that would have been a quick ride from the other way. That's been a settlement pond. I reckon you catch over here. If you look at the back of the door, you see there where that hinge, it's still got holes in it. We're a bit further down the spoil heaps now. Just following the river bit down here, I came across this little wall. It's got a pipe in it. The pipe goes some way back. Not entirely sure how far it goes back. Well, it goes quite far back. Kind of looks like it opens up a little bit back there too. Lots of random holes and tunnels around here. So there's the other end of the, uh, the river that goes underneath the mine site. Drops down a fair bit. Like it's all the way right up the top there is the start of it and the back behind that building by those trees. And it drops all the way down to here. I think this is the, uh, the mine captain's house overlooking the entire mine site. <laughs> Being kept nice and cosy in here. Sat by his fire. <clears throat> Multi story. Two levels. Some fireplaces. Cast iron. Some on this side too. Yeah, 
Yeah. Would have been quite a nice house, this one. What's out from here? Now just a Fulton. Where are the boys gone? Through this little doorway. Oh, there's another hidden part of the house. How'd you get in there? Hello. Anyone in? Oh, it's the old uh, drain, isn't it? Jesus, it's like a swamp. Bloody hell. It's well weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's like... It's like marsh swamp. probably come down there into the crusher ball mill sort of style thing and they need to clean their uh, flotation ponds full of harsh chemicals acids and stuff to break everything down properly poisonous cyanide yep that sort of stuff that's why they're full now they'd have been like empty and they'd have been able to service it would have just been like this you know Nice. Yeah, the wall's caved in. Here. So they would have been stored in the center and then they have to double wall. I don't know. Are the air vents in there? So if things did explode, then you got the double layer of protection, I think. Here's the old water feed. Runs off in that direction. Or it would have met the water wheel. Mushy mushrooms. <laughs> so that concludes our tour of the uh, Snaefell Mines. Interesting historical place. If you want to know more? Make sure you read Andrew Scarf's book about the Snaefell Mine. And that's everything. Thanks for watching.